We all know the destructive potential of nuclear energy. We also know that nuclear energy can be harnessed to produce the electricity needed in our daily lives. But what, exactly, is the source of this potent energy? We will now explore this intriguing subject. According to Einstein's special theory of relativity, the mass of an object increases as its speed increases. Einstein proposed the idea that, because performing work on an object increases its energy, then mass must also be a form of energy. Working from this simple idea, Einstein developed the now familiar equation for the total energy of an object. He further suggested that mass can be converted into another form of energy and vice versa. A change in energy of a system is therefore related to the change in the mass of the system. This relationship can be observed when an elementary particle known as a pion decays into electromagnetic radiation. How much energy would be released by the decay of a pion at rest? Correct. This is equivalent to 135 million electron volts. Quite a lot of energy from such a tiny particle. When working with nuclear processes, it is useful to think of an atomic mass unit in terms of its equivalent energy. A helium atom contains two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons. Yet, if you add up the individual masses of those particles, the total is more than the mass of a helium atom. This means that when the individual nucleons came together to form the helium nucleus, some of the mass was lost as energy. This mass defect explains the stability of the nucleus, because it takes an amount of energy equivalent to that lost in the nucleus formation to break up the helium nucleus. This energy is known as the binding energy. What is the average binding energy per nucleon for helium? Correct. The average binding energy per nucleon is 7.1 million electron volts. The binding energy per nucleon varies with mass number. The iron-56 nucleus is very stable because it has one of the highest binding energies per nucleon. It is important to realize that the binding energy is not something that holds the nucleus together. The force that holds the nucleus together is known as the strong nuclear force. Unlike electrostatic and gravitational forces, which can act over great distances, the strong nuclear force is a short-range attractive force, which acts only when nucleons are in close proximity. Strong nuclear forces are much greater than electrostatic and gravitational forces. For this reason, protons that repel each other via oppositely directed electrostatic forces are nonetheless held tightly together in the nucleus by the strong nuclear force. Stable nuclides with atomic numbers greater than about 20 usually have more neutrons than protons. Why do you think this is so? Correct. The extra neutrons exert an attractive nuclear force which helps maintain the stability of the nucleus. However, there are no stable nuclides with atomic numbers greater than 83, because beyond this critical point, added neutrons are unable to overcome the increased electrostatic repulsion in the nucleus. During the 1930s, experiments involving the bombardment of uranium by neutrons revealed that uranium nuclei would sometimes split apart into two smaller fragments. The phenomenon was dubbed nuclear fission. According to the liquid drop model, the energy acquired by absorbing a neutron causes the nucleus to oscillate and become distorted, much like a drop of liquid. As the nucleus elongates, the short-range nuclear force between the two ends is greatly weakened, and the now dominant electrostatic repulsive force causes the nucleus to split. Typically, a fission reaction produces two fission fragments of roughly similar masses, as well as some free neutrons. The binding energy per nucleon for uranium is about 7.6 million electron volts, whereas that for the typical fission fragment is about 8.5 million electron volts. How much energy is released per fission event? Correct. 
the energy released by the fission of a gram of uranium is equivalent to that released by the burning of three tons of coal. This is why a nuclear reactor is so efficient in materials required for producing electricity. Of course, in order for a reactor to work, the fission reactions in its uranium fuel must be self-sustaining. Recall the fact just mentioned that when a uranium nucleus fissions, it releases some free neutrons. These excess neutrons can initiate fission reactions in other nearby uranium nuclei, and the free neutrons produced by those fission reactions produce yet more neutrons, thereby causing a chain reaction. The minimum mass of fissionable material needed to sustain a chain reaction is called the critical mass. When just enough fission reactions occur in order to keep the chain reaction going, a steady supply of energy is produced for operating a nuclear power plant. However, if too many fissions occur, the excess neutrons produce a runaway chain reaction with explosive consequences.